It is 7.30 and I am back on trail. Um, you may notice I'm in a different shirt. I got a short sleeve under my shirt from Goodwill when I was in town. Um, because I've just been disliking the sleeves of the sun hoodie, but we'll see how often I wear this with the sun hoodie, just depending on the heat and the exposure of the day. Um, me and Milkman got a ride back to trail with the trail angel named Lilani, who I contacted off the list of trail angels for Tahoe that was posted at the road intersection. Um, I always pants so much coming out of town. The plan today is to do about 27 miles. So to elaborate on what I said yesterday, um, the bear canister was originally, you know, thought was 27 miles past Tahoe is where the bear canister was no longer required. So my original plan was to send home the bear canister from Tahoe and then just make sure to hike the 27 miles out today, which is still my plan. Um, but while we were in Tahoe, heard from another hiker. The hikers that are ahead of us have been getting fined for not having the bear canister and that a new rule started January or February of this year um, requiring the bear canister um, in further areas, making it so that we'd have to carry it 47 miles out of town. Um, that information was not in the Far Out app or released by the PCTA, which is the PCT Association. Um, and so, you know, I tried to look it up online, couldn't find a lot of information, but ultimately decided it's better to be safe than sorry um, and carry it a little bit further. And then I'll send it home from Sierra City, which is apparently a very, very small town, a mile and a half off trail in about 96 miles that the post office is only open from 10 to 2, so I have to make limited hours, but that'll be where I can send home my canister next. Um, so yeah, just a nice chill day, 27 miles, four days to Sierra City, testing out my new shirt, see how it goes. This is Echo Lake Chalet that we're passing along, and obviously then, therefore, Echo Lake. There are several beautiful cabins on the lake, and from what I can see, the only way to access them is via the trail or via the lake, you know, the dock that I passed earlier. Um, doesn't look like there's any, like, you know, there's no wires or anything going to these houses, so they're probably off-grid and probably only accessible, you know, not in the winter months, but that's a pretty awesome little vacation home. This is Lake Aloha. I am coming down uh, from what was called Dick's Pass um, and apparently there's someone who commented that that was the last time we'd be above 9,000 feet. Now I don't know enough to know if that's the last time in Northern California or for the rest of the trail 
um, but at least for a little while it sounds like we're gonna be staying below 9,000 feet uh, which you know just means easier breathing doesn't mean less climbing because we can start lower and get you know and do the same climbing of feet just starting from a lower altitude so just easier breathing and that also means the worst part of that means it's also gonna start getting hotter for us it is 1 15 and i am stopping for lunch um, i've done exactly 16 miles and about 3500 feet of climbing um so for the rest of the day i, I have 11.1 .1 miles and slightly less than a thousand feet of climbing so most of the day is done. I'm sitting here with a view of Dix Lake down there. Uh, milkman just passed and said he's going swimming in the lake, but to me, it's not a hot enough day and I am not hot enough for once. I don't, it's been overcast. Apparently it's supposed to chance of rain again today. Um, so that's fun, but only like a 30 to 40% chance today. I think tomorrow's like a 40 to 50% chance. Um, but we'll deal with that when it comes. This is Fontanellis Lake, I believe. It is 5.18 and I'm taking a five minute break because I am exhausted. I have two and a half to three miles left to get to camp. Um, the camp we originally planned was two and a half miles. But I'm wondering if we want to go another half mile because that'll get us at a lake and camping on water. Um, but anyway, two and a half to three miles, but I'm tired and I'm hungry. So I'm gonna sit here for a few minutes to get some energy back. More reality of the long distance hiking. As I said when I sat down on the rock, I was taking a five, ten minute break to get energy to go further. Hiking more today is the last thing I want to do. I really would love to set up my tent, and lay down, eat and read, but it was it's only five what time is it now? Five thirty. So I need to hike further, not necessarily because of the time, although it is a waste of day to not hike further, but because of my goals. So in four days, Monday, I want to be in Sierra City, and Sierra City was 96 miles from Tahoe, and not only do I want to be in Sierra City, I want to get there before 2, which is when the post office closes so that I can send home my bear canister. So I don't want to hike right now. I'm tired, but I'm going to do it anyways, because I need to. Um, it also doesn't help that I'm over carrying water, which is a bad habit of mine. Um, whenever I'm dry camping, I always tend to carry more water than I need and end up just tossing it in the morning. Um, but, so yeah, that doesn't help either. But I think I only have le like two miles left. So just gotta struggle through these last two miles. to the camp spot um, by 6.15. That is 27.2 miles on a day out of town, um, which in my mind is pretty dang impressive. Um, given the fact that I'm laying on a rock, you can tell I'm pretty exhausted. Uh, I don't want to unpack my tent or unpack or do anything quite yet, though I do want to confirm with Milkman that he's happy staying here um, versus going 0 0.5 miles further to the lake so I'm gonna wait like 15 minutes or so if I don't see him then I'll just go ahead and get set up with camp um, but I'll give him 15 minutes to um, 
take it here and see what he has to say. Good morning from day 52. I never gave the update last night, but um, we did not go further. Thankfully, Milkman had carried out enough water, planned to camp there. And he said, he was like, I'll go further. I was like, no, I don't want to. I want to stay here. He's like, yeah, this is good. Um, he saw a big, big black bear, brown, but um, about half a mile before camp. Um, so I'm glad I missed that. Um, last night was probably the deepest night of sleep I've had on trail. So I'm a very active sleeper who normally I go to bed between 9.30 and 10, just staying up a little bit reading. And then I wake up every two or three hours. Um, last night, fell asleep around nine and I didn't wake up till four. I didn't go back to sleep, but um, slept solidly through four. So I'm feeling very well rested today. Um, I'm a little bit sunburnt. I don't know if it'll come across, but a little bit sunburnt from wearing my um, t-shirt yesterday. Obviously I'm still wearing it today. I put on sunscreen. Um, it should go to tan really quick. Um, I like right now at least I'm liking the feeling of the t-shirt. Uh, if it gets more exposed or hot that might change. The goal for today is 28 and a half miles. That'll get us at the last marked campsite um, for the for seven and a half miles after that. You know there's always scattered unmarked campsites but 28 and a half uh, and apparently it's a great sunset, which I feel like I haven't seen a good sunset from a campsite in a while. So that's the goal. Um, and I think that's it for today. Going downhill for a while and then there's some pretty good climbs. Um, about 5,500 foot of climbing throughout the day today. Um, not rolly climbing like uh, it was the day I hit 30 miles, but some pretty significant climbs. So we'll see how we're feeling. I'm trying to do double duty of watching as I walk along Richardson Lake. Apparently there is a resident rattlesnake um, that likes to hang out around the lake on trail and down by the lake. Hopefully more so down by the lake. And then also some people have seen a mama bear with, I forget how many, with one or two cubs. So trying to keep my head up and down at the same time so I Make sure to avoid both those dangers. My foot is healed enough where rock walking on these rocks doesn't hurt anymore. But it's still just very annoying to hike on. Lake Tahoe right there off in the distance. The trail passes through the Alpine Meadows Ski Resort, I believe it's called. You can see a sign right there. It's a black diamond called Wolverine Bowl. That must be the resort way down there. 
see if we can. And there, you probably can't see it, but right there is a ski lift. I love these mossy trees. I think they're so beautiful. It is 12.15 um, and I'm sitting down for my lunch. Uh, I've done 17.8 miles so far and sadly only about 2,700 feet of climbing, which means I have, for the plan, 10.7 miles left to go, but 2,900 feet of climbing left to go. Um, you know, I may go, depending on how I feel, I, I'm not optimistic for this, but I may go a couple miles past that. Um, but, like I said, not optimistic for it. That will probably be where I end up, especially because I want to take at least an hour, if not an hour and a half break here just because I am tired um, and my feet are getting a little bit sore. So I am about to add a drink mix to my water and realize I made a little mistake. So um, I don't drink enough water out here. Uh, so I like to add water additives to make me drink more. The flavor really helps. Like most hikers, I usually do electrolytes. Um, they were out of stock when I uh, was, at, was in South Lake Tahoe. So I just got a water flavor, except I messed up and got one with added caffeine. Now, the problem is I don't drink anything with caffeine. I don't drink coffee, tea, I don't have any caffeine at all in my life. So it doesn't say on these individual packets how much caffeine is in them. So this will be an interesting experience. Experiment, see how much it affects me huh? and uh, how that affects my hiking day. It is 2 o'clock and I am finally leaving my break spot after an hour and 45 minutes. I uh, just couldn't be motivated to get myself to get up. Um, even though there's only 10.7 miles left and already done almost 18, uh, looking at the elevation gain was not enjoyable to see that still have the majority of the climbing left to go. One climb of 1,400 feet, one climb of 1,300 feet, and just kind of motivate myself to get up and going. I am kind of regretting wearing the shirt. It feels nice to have short sleeves. My arms are really, really burnt, even having worn sunscreen. And it's probably not showing up on camera. Um, so I will probably be switching back to my sun hoodie tomorrow, but now to get started on the first climb. As you can see, I ended up putting my sun hoodie on. I instantly feel hotter wearing the sleeves, but the burn on my arms, even with the sunscreen, was starting to get to the point where it was hurting to touch and like hurting to put on my backpack and have the straps hit my arms. So I figured I should probably do the skin safe thing and put on my hoodie. Um, and also as an update, I'm not sure that I feel the caffeine um, in the drink, so that's probably a good thing. Uh, they, I mean, I imagine it's just so little caffeine in those pouches, but yeah, I'm not feeling any different so far. It's starting to thunder behind me. Clouds don't look so good over there. I think the clouds are moving in the same direction as I am, so just hoping I can outrun the storm as long as possible. Honestly, the rain would probably feel really good, but I didn't weatherproof my pack today, although, you know, that only takes like a minute or two if it starts to rain for me to do that. And the rain would feel good for me. I just don't want to feel deal with the wet bag and setting up camp in the rain and all that jazz again. Um, but hopefully that just stays over there. 
you probably won't be able to tell what I'm doing. Um, but because it's thundering and the clouds are getting closer, I decided I'm going to stop and waterproof my bag. So what I'm about to pull out is stuff that is not in any waterproofness. So this is my electronics bag. It is in a waterproof sack, but just to be extra precautious, I will throw it in another waterproof sack with my uh, Kindle. And then I take a second garbage bag. It does have some holes in it, but it does the job. Because remember, my sleep stuff is at the bottom in a zone bag, and then it's my food canister. So I put my raincoat, will stay on top, my first aid kit, my electronics, and my warm clothes. Back in. Roll this bag. And then I put my tent, which is in a waterproof bag, and my rain jacket in there. And then this is my footprint, and it goes on top. That's just where I always keep it, but it also helps um, when it does rain to keep the rain from going inside my pack. That way, everything I need is now rainproof. It is starting to sprinkle a little bit and it's still thundering. My thought is I'm less than half a mile from the top so I get up and over the top and then run down the other side back to tree line rather than being stuck over here. So I hope I don't regret this decision but I'm gonna go for it. Made it to the top little bit harder. I'm in another ski area. It really is a spectacular view. And I wasn't ever completely above tree line. So now we rush back down so we can cower in the trees if necessary. Walking right underneath the ski lift. Besides the scenery, the other aspect that's really starting to kick in that's different than the Sierras is the water. It hasn't been as bad as it was in Southern California, but I just filled up on water um, 1.9 miles before the tent campsite. I'm carrying four liters of water because the next source of water is not for 11 plus miles, so thankfully most of those miles will be in the morning, but still annoying. We did have to do a 10 mile carry during the day today, and then 11 something tomorrow. So just more evidence that we are in a new section of the PCT. Made it 
almost to the top of the last climb. That is Tinker Knob. And, uh, or maybe I'm at Tinker Knob right now. I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's just this little uphill to go. And then I get 0 0.7 miles downhill to camp. This last climb really made me work for it. Very steep, more than 500 feet per mile, and carrying four liters of water. By the time I get to camp, I'll have done 28.5 miles and somewhere between 5,500 and 6,000 feet of gain, which, you know, the day I did my 30.5 mile day was the same elevation gain, but the big difference is the type of gain. Um, that day was small, rolly hills where you barely recognized you were going uphill. Today was three bigger climbs that were very steep and so definitely felt the uphill, especially the last one with the water carry, and tired out the legs much more. But the good news is we are almost to camp and just had to follow the trail along this ridge here for 0.7 more. That is where we came from. The views to the east side. And to the west. The trail keeps going down that way. Ridge walks are my absolute favorite trail variation because how can you not love the exposure and being able to see such beauty all around. Made it to my campsite. There's about four other tents um, in the trees behind me, but I figured if I sit up here, then I can sit in my tent and watch the sunset without having to get out of my tent.